Hello everybody, welcome. Let's get started with some basic keyboard input. The plan is to create a singleton class for each of the input devices that we want to use in our game. First we'll create a keyboard class and then a mouse class and a gamepad class. Let's open up our code. Inside of our flat library, let's create a new folder. And I call this input. And in here, we're going to add a new class. We're going to call this the flat keyboard. This is going to be a sealed class. It's going to be a singleton class. And I'm going to use lazy initialization, which means that the, the object won't actually be created until its first use. So the way I'm going to do that is first create a private static read-only lazy. And this is going to be the keyboard, actually the flat keyboard. And I'm just going to call this lazy, and that's going to be equal to a new instance of lazy flat keyboard. And the constructor for lazy is going to take a reference to the constructor for the flat keyboard. Next, we just need to make a way for the user to get an instance of the flat keyboard. And we do that by making a static property. And we're going to call this, this is going to be a flat keyboard instance. And we're simply going to return the lazy instance value. Now let's set up the constructor, which will have no parameters. We need to bring in the monogame namespaces. We want two fields that are going to record the keyboard state at two different points. This will be the keyboard state, previous keyboard state, and then the another keyboard state that's going to have the current keyboard state. In the constructor we're just going to give this some default values. We'll just get the keyboard state and then set the current keyboard state to the previous keyboard state. I'm also going to need an update function. And here we're going to record not only the current keyboard state, but save the last keyboard state in the previous keyboard state uh, field. The previous keyboard state will be the current keyboard state, and then the current keyboard state will be the new state. And finally we'll have a couple of functions for actually getting keyboard presses. And the first one's going to be is key down. We'll just take some a keys parameter. And this one's going to be the most simple. It just says if the current keyboard state is key down and then the provided key, we just straight return the value. Now the other one is I want to know if a key is clicked. Actually I'm going to name this key and the way we do that is if the key is down but the previous state of the key was up that means it's a click because the next frame if you hold it down not only will the current state be down but the previous state will be down as well so we simply say uh, if the current keyboard state is down and the previous keyboard state is not down and we'll put a not right here then that is a click. If both of these are down or both of these are up then it's not a click. But if it's down currently and the previous state was up then we have a click. That's the basic keyboard input right there. We can test this out now. Let's go ahead and in the update function Oh, we need to bring in the namespace. So we'll be using flat input. Let's bring in an instance of our keyboard. OK, 
Okay. We need to update the keyboard. And then instead of using the built-in code here, let's just use our keyboard class. And let's see if that will exit the game. So I'm going to go ahead and press escape once this gets started. Okay, so there's where we left off last time. We, ha we have this odd shaped window displaying our sprites. Let's press escape. And that works out really well. That looked really good. In fact, we can change this. Instead of down, we can make it is key clicked. And that should do the same thing. In fact, let's test this by storing an X coordinate. So we'll just make a simple X equals uh, 32. I think that's where we put the sprite last time. We'll change this position here to be X. And then we'll say if the keyboard is clicked right, I think is what it is, that'll be the right arrow. We're going to increment X by 32. Okay, and so let's see if that works. We should see that did not work. What was the error? Let's just cast that to an integer, and now it should work just fine. There we go. And every time I'm pressing the right key, the character moves to the right. And that's a click. Let's check the... Let's turn this into a disk key down. And instead of moving 32, since it's going to move a lot more, let's change this to a lower number. Let's just do 2 and see if that works. And I'm just going to hold the key down and see if he moves to the right very smoothly. And there we go. That's it for the keyboard input. I actually want to change one more thing. I'm going to go to the properties of our game. And output type has a Windows application. I'm going to change that to a console application because I want to be able to send information to the console application just for debugging purposes. And then when we're all done and we don't need this anymore, we can, we can switch it back to a Windows application. So let's save that, go back in here. And then we can also write here, tell the console that we want to write something, say right arrow down. And actually that would be a lot of writing to the console. So let's use the clicked function. And we'll change this back to 32. All right, so now we have a console window in the background. And every time I press the right arrow, we should see information pop up in the console. So we'll see the character move to the right. And we should see information in the console as well. All right. There we go. So that's it for the basic keyboard input.